everybody, and welcome back to the Mile Higher Podcast, episode 105. Today we're here talking about the Montauk Project conspiracy theory. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love this topic because there's so many fascinating ideas and theoretical mm-hmm. concepts that could be real, but you know, we don't really exactly have proof for them, but yeah. it's still super interesting to talk about. Something happened here, though. Oh, yeah. You know, I that, believe so. There's not that much that can be proven. But there's enough sketchy stuff for you to definitely be Absolutely. like, okay. And there's been enough people that have come forward to mm-hmm. talk about this top secret project. A lot of witnesses. Known as or I guess you can project. call them. Whistleblowers really yeah. is what they are. Yeah. yeah. That have come forward and told us all of the juicy details about what happened and all of the horrible things too that happened as well. But that is what we were talking about today. So get your tin hats ready because it's one of those conspiracy episodes today. And if you guys haven't checked out the merch site, milehar.com, you're definitely missing out because we've got some cool items on there. Kendall's wearing her terrarium design that you can get on the crew neck sweatshirt. It's actually really cool. Isn't it? Hell yeah. This was my design. Well, not my design, but it was my idea. And I like told the artist what to put on it because I don't have any talent like that. But (laughs) it's so cool. I love how it turned out. It has this really cool gold reflective kind of film on it. I just love it. So definitely very check colorful. it out. Yes. Yeah. So and can cozy. I just say how comfortable yes, the clothes are? Like they are. they're seriously so comfy. They're really good quality. Oh yeah. Really good quality. So if you're looking for some comfy stuff that lasts a long time, like it washes well, yeah. it's really good quality. Not only that, but I wanted to announce we were starting to work on some new collections as well coming up for 420 as well as maybe a pet collection could be yes. coming out here hopefully in the near future. So oh, I'm so excited. Also, this episode is brought to you by Native, HelloFresh, Quip, Cosbox, and Stamps.com. But let's go ahead and get into our intro topics for the week. Quite a bit going on. Yes, our first one is actually very exciting news because an international team of astrobiologists claim that they've found organic molecules uh, via the Curiosity Mars rover, which essentially means that there is evidence that there was life on Mars at one point. Like we have gotten one step closer to really confirming that at one point in Mars history, there is some form of life, no matter how small it may have been. But the very fact that we are starting to really piece this together and realize that at one point in Mars history, it could have been teeming with life. It could have even been like another earth at one point. A lot of people bring that theory up that it could have been exactly like earth and that there could have been beings on it that fled to earth because the conditions on it got so bad. Maybe there was nuclear war or, yeah, planetary yeah, warming absolutely. or whatever no um, that's really that, interesting idea yeah that theory actually plays into exactly my next point here is that there's a cia document that's out there about remote viewing ancient life on mars that's really interesting and i'll put a link down there so you can go look at it but there's literally a document on the cia websites that says that in 1984 the cia actually employed a psychic to remote view or you know it's a psychic ability to focus your mind on a location and based upon what this person saw during the remote viewing was that there was in fact a civilization that one million years ago existed and was on uh, the brink of collapse it was like the very end of it and this is all in this document which is really interesting that's fascinating Mm mm-hmm so i mean it comes back to whether or not you believe psychic abilities are real Mm -hmm. or you know if somebody's even able to remote view or have you know transfer your mind or consciousness to another point in time and in this case a million years ago it's pretty interesting isn't it interesting that the cia would even use a psychic it shows you they take it seriously to an extent if they would actually bring in a psychic yeah you know? i mean it, they're they 100 percent have too mm-hmm. based upon the montauk project as right. well as mk ultra and There's just what we they, know they're mm. interested in psychic abilities totally totally yeah and this individual study describes seeing infrastructure consisting of intersecting roads channels and pyramids when he remote viewed mars that's so fascinating so the fact that scientists are literally pretty much announcing that there was life on mars at one point is pretty incredible and really makes you wonder if there's validity to these theories and mm-hmm. just you know what these psychics may have seen during the remote viewing missions and stuff. Yeah. I mean, that's been my own personal theory for a while now is that there was life at one point on Mars. I think most people tend to believe that like when we've brought it up, I never see comments really saying they don't believe that. I'm curious what you guys think. Let us know in the comments if you believe that there was life on Mars Mm -hmm. and if this evidence helps you, you know, make a decision either way. Yeah. Well, and essentially what they found were are called thiophenes, which are, 
basically two bioessential elements, carbon and sulfur. Um, so it's, it's like, you know, they're often found in oil or crude oil. And if you look mm -hmm. at what oil comes from, it's fossils essentially. So if you drill down, you know, far enough or go back and far enough in time, you would then see that there was some form of life there. Mm -hmm. And this is just what the Mars Curiosity rover can get just rovering around the surface. So who, who knows what could be below the surface? We've yet to be able to go down into the ground in Mars and really see what's under there. Cause it could be teeming with life and we just don't know. We can't see it yet. So that's mind blowing to think about. Mm -hmm. But finding these thiophenes is a pretty big deal because it does give us a lot of hope that there is more signs of life or evidence of life uh, below Mars surface or in other places we've yet to discover. So the next big news story that came out this week was the execution of Alabama inmate Nathaniel Woods, which happened this past Thursday night. And the reason why this is sort of making waves through news and a lot of people are really upset about it is because Nathaniel Woods to many is a completely innocent man mm -hmm. that was executed by the state for crimes that he did not commit years ago. And what's crazy about this whole thing is when you look at the actual story, he was convicted essentially in his role of fatal shootings of three Birmingham police officers in 2004. And the person that he was with actually gave a full confession saying he was the one that actually pulled the trigger and Nathaniel didn't actually do any of, of the killings whatsoever, really had a role in it at all. Mm -hmm. So the fact that he was put to death and actually executed, even though his lawyers were trying to get a stay so that right. they could, you know, take another look at it. And this went all the way up to the Supreme mm -hmm. court and the Supreme court declined to intervene. Unfortunately, it's just so confusing because when I first read about this, which it really didn't start getting any traction until Kim Kardashian started tweeting about it. Uh, as far as the general public knowing about it. Right. Um, and it was the day before his execution was scheduled, you know, is when I first heard about it. And when I read it, I thought this has got to get, this will get a stay. This has to, because there's all this new evidence that has just come out in the last couple of weeks, this confession. I thought it would just be a for sure thing. Yeah, you would think that the, if there was enough outcry and enough evidence there that the governor, the governor is mm -hmm. ultimately the one that is making this decision here too and could mm -hmm. have have made this delayed or, or stop it altogether even it's and terrible. let him go free because he's innocent and she did not do either of those things. And then earlier in the day, on the day he was executed, he actually was told that they were going to be able to get him a stay. And he was like having his last meal with some loved ones. When he was told that, they were kind of celebrating. I mean, it wasn't like you're not going right. to get executed at all, but a stay is good. Like, a glimmer was, of hope that right. maybe mm -hmm. he would you know, have his case looked at again and... And then they crushed that glimmer of hope by basically being like, no, never mind. Yeah. You actually are being executed Alabama. today. Mm -hmm. Today. Can you imagine how terrified you'd be and just what would be going through your mind in your last moments thinking like, wow, if this day had played out any differently or if someone else, someone's decision was made differently, then I may not be here right now. I just can't imagine how terrified you'd be in that moment or what it would be like to die as an innocent person. Yeah. Especially for crimes you didn't commit and you know, 100% mm -hmm. that you are innocent and mm -hmm. the system just completely screwed you over. It's just disgraceful. I don't understand the rush. We keep people on death row for so long, so long. Yeah. And yeah. then why speed it up when it's like you do have some new evidence, you have all these people that are angry. Why? I don't see the point. What's the rush to put this man down? I think it's disappointing that the Supreme Court declined to intervene into this when clearly there's issues here and mm -hmm. There's no reason they couldn't just delay this even to look into it further or do anything more to keep this man alive. And and the fact that as soon as the governor, you know, knew that the Supreme Court was going to decline to intervene, she was like, let's move forward with this. And mm -hmm. and they did. And it's it's just really tough because I don't think that there's like you said, there should be any rush to put people to death, especially if there is enough evidence that they could be completely innocent or innocent of the crimes that they're on death row for in the first place. So yeah, because it's like, if he is innocent, then he was just murdered by the system. Mm -hmm. And you know, we have a serious issue because this is happening all the time. I mean, and it's disproportionately crazy. to African Americans too. Definitely. And, and that seems clearly to be the trend. And it's really 
really unfortunate that we're in 2020 and it mm-hmm. still seems our system is so antiquated mm-hmm. and there needs to be so many, you know, too, too few people have power. Yeah, in my opinion, too I few agree. people have power in the political Huge decisions system. like this shouldn't be up to one person, right? It shouldn't all fall back onto one person. That's insane. No, I mean, this is someone's life in, in their hands and mm-hmm. if they could potentially be innocent, I just feel like they need to put some more thought into it and mm-hmm. give it a little bit more time to review the information and actually check things out. How can you live as an official who does this mm-hmm. with, you know, this on your conscience that you may have just put a exactly. innocent man to death? How do you live with yourself? I don't know how she's living with herself. Like if there's even a question, you should put it, do a stay 100%. The fact that they didn't is just, it's evil. It's evil. It's murder mm-hmm. in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And it's they, really disappointing. And he was executed via lethal injection, mm-hmm. which is, really not in a humane way to do it if you're going to do it at all and it's really sad to hear that he had to go through this mm-hmm. and it can be painful it can be absolutely take it can take a long time to mm-hmm. actually die so mm-hmm. it's all around just a horrible situation and uh, really sad for the family and yeah. obviously everybody's hearts are with the family and just mm-hmm. like this is we got to make sure this is, doesn't keep happening and mm-hmm. figure out a way to make the system better because in the meantime, we've got the Golden State Killer over here, mm-hmm. Joseph D'Angelo, who's 74 years old, mm-hmm. serial killer, who is requesting to plead guilty if prosecutors agree to not seek the death penalty. Mm-hmm. And my guess and my feeling is, is that he might be granted this, that he might get out of the death penalty. Well, I think, yeah, I mean, in a sense, he's kind of getting out of the death penalty, but it's like he's going to die in prison either way. It's going to cost millions of dollars like up to 20 million some estimates have been and it's going to take so so long and all of the people that have to testify against him and like talk about their stories it could be really tough on them uh just i mean he may not even live to see the end of the trials so by the time that the trial ends and then you know it's a long period before they actually execute someone anyway he's probably going to die of natural causes before he was ever executed in the first place. So there's really no point. I think they're trying to save taxpayer dollars and time. And yeah. And it's just like, he obviously did it. He's never going to be let out on parole or anything like that. And I think it's a personal opinion, what you think of the death penalty. If you think it's, I personally think you're almost getting off easier, getting the death penalty. You're just going to be put out of your misery. I think you should have to sit there until the end of your sorry life and think about what you did every single fucking day until you die. I think that's worse. Yeah. And from stories that I hear of, of inmates and shows that I've watched, it seems that that's the case is that it's way worse to be in prison and have to deal with yourself and Mm -hmm. all these things that you did versus, you know, being put out essentially. So, right. And I mean, obviously in his case, he clearly wants to live, which it's like, you don't want to give him what he wants, but we also want to do what's best for everyone. It's like I said, it's so much time, so much money he wouldn't ever make it to the death penalty stage anyway. Um, And a lot of the victims feel that this is good, that this is better to, you know, not have to go through this whole process. And they're going to, it's just years of trauma. They'll have to go through on top of what they've already been through. But you don't um, think it'll provide comfort to the victims? Well, they said in exchange, if they, if this goes through, they would like a lot of victims have requested that, you know, they still get questions answered that, you know, maybe he answers a few things in exchange, like as part of the plea. Gotcha. Um, There's some things that they want to know and they want cleared up. I mean, I I would hope that they don't just like give him the, what he all, everything that he wants and just give him the life sentence and let him No, I see what people live out the rest of his days, just hanging out or whatever. You know, I think that just be hanging out. I mean, I I don't know. Yeah. I think he's like, in solitary too is he just out with general public probably not he's, he's a, a high profile yeah. i mean he's high profile too I've, so just let him sit there and think about this forever i mean i think it's better for him. the victims and for taxpayers and i don't know i'm split on it though what do you guys think yeah it's hard because i think from from an emotional point of view you just want to get somebody like this out of the world you know right. like he's evil let's just get him out of the world one mm-hmm. last evil person mm-hmm. to have to think about or worry about but at the same time, I totally see where you're coming from and probably where the majority of people come from mm-hmm. that he should uh, get this life sentence. But well, do you know if he's religious? That's what I was just going to ask, because I think I'm not 
particularly religious, so I don't really know, but I'm pretty sure that a lot of religions ha- feel very much one way about the death penalty and are most mm. of the time against it, I believe. And so I'm just kind of curious in in that aspect in general, if you have a serial killer who you hate and you think is like the worst person ever, and like you were saying, like he should, he deserves to just sit and rot and think about what he did for his whole life. If that person's like super religious and they're like, oh, well that's, you know, the death penalty is bad. Like, you know, I don't, that's, I don't believe in that. Do you think that it should be like the opposite way then? You know what I mean? Like, I think it's cause everyone's perspective is so different. And so is there really a correct answer of which way which is punishment really, should be handed yeah, down which them. way yeah. is right mm-hmm. to, to end up with, I guess you could say. Right. Because everyone's perspective of what's worse is their own, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Depending on your belief system mm-hmm. and what you think happens after you die, especially right. Like for somebody that believes in, there's absolutely nothing after it. You cease to exist. Then they might be more like, mm-hmm. okay, the death penalty makes sense. Right. But if you case. believe in reincarnation, you think they're going to be, you know, executed and then immediately born into another life. Then it's kind of like they're getting off easier. I don't know. It's a very, very controversial it topic. Is. It is. We want to know what you guys think. Absolutely. But before we get into the Montauk project conspiracy, we'd like to thank our first sponsors for today. Throughout my life, I've used a number of different toothbrushes, including electric toothbrushes or just manual toothbrushes. But I got to say, Quip absolutely changed my toothbrushing experience. Quip makes your dental hygiene routine extremely simple, which means brushing for two minutes twice a day and flossing regularly, starting with an electric toothbrush, refillable floss, and anti-cavity toothpaste. What's also awesome about the Equip Electric Toothbrush is it has sensitive sonic vibrations with a built-in timer and 30-second pulses to guide a full and even clean so you never miss a spot. And the Quip Floss Dispenser comes with pre-marked string to help you use just enough. Plus, Quip delivers fresh brush head, floss, and toothpaste refills to your door every three months with free shipping so your routine is always right. Join over 3 million healthy mouths and get Quip today, starting at $25. And if you go to getquip.com slash milehigher right now, you'll get your first refill free. That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash milehigher. G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash milehigher. Quip, the good habits company. Guys, I just discovered a really cool new subscription box. It's called Causebox. Causebox is a quarterly subscription and it's curated by women for women and it's filled with all sorts of amazing products and brands that are ethical, sustainable, or have a positive mission to give back and make the world better. In my latest box, I was super excited that there was a reusable bento box with a fork and knife and an insulated tumbler. It also included a huge duffel bag. Look at the size of this thing if you're watching on YouTube. A Luna Nectar Jade Roller, which is awesome for skincare even something from Pure Cosmetics, which is a fantastic brand. Um, This is the four-in-one correcting primer. And the best part is that, of course, we got our listeners a exclusive discount. Just go to causebox.com slash milehigherpodcast and use the code milehigherpodcast to get your first box for 30% off. That is causebox.com slash milehigherpodcast with the code milehigherpodcast for 30% off your first box. That box is worth over $250, but you can get it for less than 39 today so go check it out at Causebox right now and i can tell you firsthand that you are going to love it all right let's talk some montauk project conspiracy Mon- yes. talk about it i've been excited oh, to do this Mon- one talk about it let's there you Mon- go. talk about it <laughs> that is good i like that one okay this is some creepy shit though this is like some crazy shit went down if it's true in camp mm. hero yes is the places where the supposed secret projects that the government and military did uh, in Montauk, New York, which is a real place. Yeah, and it's it's very pretty. Yeah, it's very I have beautiful. A friend who just went there and like posted pictures on social media. Yeah, it's it's super beautiful. Actually, all the rich people go and hang out mm-hmm. around there, of course. And Ooh. it's on Long Island. It's like mm-hmm. on the uh, far tip of Long Island, uh, look overlooking the ocean, and the views are just incredible. Oh, I'm sure. But the Montauk project actually came about because of a number of stories that people told of their alleged experiences in these top secret government projects that they were involved in uh, during the time that it was active, or at least we knew it was active. And as far as what we know went on, there's a number of different things that we believe occurred in some of these projects, which included testing out new types of technologies, including like time travel, teleportation, mind control, 
uh, even creating like genetic testing on animals and uh, in a way that's creepy and weird them basically combining like two different species and creating a hybrid beings and things like that just really like anything creepy that you can think of they were potentially doing it there that's why it reminds me of that movie zootopia it's a disney movie it's called zootopia it's like all the animals live in this one town but then they find out that they're like secretly breeding animals together to make hybrid species Mm -hmm. remember yeah exactly and they I like break I've in. It's that. like an undercover lab thing. Oh yeah, I told you I, I watched Zootopia. I loved that movie. It was a great really movie. cute. Yeah, it I is. really liked that movie. I, I have a conspiracy theory that it is Ooh. based on the Montauk Project. Oh, oh shit. Whoa. Maybe they drew some inspiration. I think from they it. did. Disney Maybe. does that kind of shit, dude. They pull their, they put all types of storylines in there. Have they do. Meaning. They do. That's very true. Dude, do. Disney is one of the most powerful companies mm-hmm. in, on earth. I feel like I could definitely see them being in a lot of weird mm-hmm. shit and being like i wonder Ooh. if we could do like a conspiracy podcast on disney Ooh, would you guys like or would to people see get that? offended oh i'm sure there'll be some people <laughs> we'll ruin <but> everybody <laughs> they can chill <laughs> it's fine there's always someone that's offended why well, I, I think i think it's probably true though because i think if you even look into hollywood and things like that you can oftentimes find yeah. these underlying oh, themes very that are in a lot of conspiracy theories very true mm-hmm. the disney stuff is pretty creepy yeah and and also stranger things the Mm -hmm. show on netflix that's Mm -hmm. super popular and i really enjoy it i know you like it too but oh, i love it it is actually based upon uh, all the stories that came out about uh, the montauk project yeah i mean which is pretty obvious it's clearly supposed to be based on all yeah that. it's not like a subtle thing that they put in there right like, well they were going to call the show montauk at first and yeah and then they changed the that. name to stranger things Stranger Things sounds a lot better. Ma- yeah, it's a better title for sure. People but would I, not have been able to pronounce that. Yeah, Mon- they'd be like Montag. Yeah, they would have been confused. Yeah, Stranger Things sounds much better. It that does. Was a good choice for them. But if you've ever seen that show, then you know what happens in it, and a lot of those things are what people actually reported happening to them in the Montauk Project. Well, not only that, the Montauk Project is believed to be an extension of a few other top secret projects, including the Philadelphia Experiment, which we'll talk about more here in a minute as well as part of mk ultra which i can't believe we haven't done an mk ultra episode yet that's i know we need to i've done a video about it a long time ago because mm-hmm. when you dive into that you're like holy shit they were doing this stuff to people yeah and that's confirmed mm-hmm. i mean yeah. they've admitted it mm-hmm. oh and yeah the witness videos are insane like if you just i wonder if they're still on youtube they may have taken them down by now but i know i had them in my video a few years ago mm-hmm. but there's just endless witness testimony on YouTube of people who claim that they were affected by MK ultra. And the thing is they all look like they have, they look similar. They have like similar physical characteristics. They kind of, I don't even know how to explain it. Like some of them have the same looking nostrils. Yeah, it almost so weird, looks like yeah. they were all affected in the same way physically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's so strange. Yeah. Well, those, we should do a whole MK ultra episode for sure. Yeah. And, and it'll play off of this one really nice too. Cause you'll kind of get some, basic mm-hmm. overviews of some of the things that they were doing in the montauk project as well in mk ultra as a whole but yeah it's what well, we're about to get into some wild stuff because mm-hmm. it goes beyond just psychic abilities i mean it goes into aliens it goes into other conspiracies it gets really really mm-hmm. wild so as far as we know the first experimentation that kind of took place that was directly involved with the montauk project began at the brookhaven national laboratories in long island new york and a doctor by the name John von Neumann was actually trying to link computers with minds and supposedly succeeded. So it's crazy to think that years ago they were already trying to experiment with connecting computer systems to brains. I was just going to say that because that's something they're still working on now. Elon Musk. Yeah, I was going to say this guy's like ahead of his time here. And they may have already accomplished it years ago in a top secret project and it just never you know, made it out mm-hmm. to the public. And I think that's a very real possibility. There's probably tons of things that have been accomplished yes. that... You know, we just never get to hear about. We never get to hear about anything interesting. I know all the all the greatest technologies that are out there. It yeah. seems like are all like under wraps, and we're just slowly trying to catch up with everything that's already been. It's discovered. funny to me that people think that we have everything that's possibly out there too. Like any good technology or any new technology, we definitely know about it. If it if it exists, we know about it because it would be on the news. No, that's not how it works. <laughs> no, well, if you think about it, I mean, the people, the most powerful groups in the world, the military and all these other, you know, black projects mm-hmm. and secret groups that are out there would not want the public to have access exactly. to this technology because then, the, you know, it's, they can't keep it for it. them. Well, it's like mainly they want to use it for probably military. Right, reasons. exactly. Military. Sorry, that's not really <laughs> weird, but uh, military reasons. Right. You know, because they don't want their secrets exposed or possible weapons that they're going to use on people exposed. 
So it seems to me, based upon history and all these different projects, the military has always been, and the secret groups have always been way ahead of us in terms mm -hmm. of the technology that we're right. used to. And, you know, the fact that they could have already accomplished connecting computers to brains 40 years ago is really mind blowing to think about. Cause mm -hmm. if the research continued and all this work continued, it's crazy to think where, where they could, could be at now. right now. I mean, I'm sure it's they're scary, way honestly, farther where than we it think. It could be at right now. It is. So yeah, the fact that he was doing this back in, you know, years and years ago is, is kind of crazy, but he also claimed Dr. Newman also claimed that they opened a time vortex back to 1943 via the Philadelphia experiment. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of this comes back to is time travel and the ability mm -hmm. to manipulate space and time in order to go to any point in history. And a lot of people, a lot of conspiracy theorists out there really believe that time travel already exists, that people are already time traveling and it could totally be possible. It really could be because they're working on this shit so long ago. If they figured mm -hmm. it out, it's not like they're going to tell us. Yeah. I mean, they're you could even look at and, Nikola Tesla. Yeah. I think right. a lot of this stuff really starts with Nikola Tesla because he was such the pioneer for all this new mm -hmm. technology and discovering all of these secrets about the universe and how to harness it in a way that is beneficial to all. But the people that run things realize that we could use that to our advantage. And that's why they went and, and seized, seized all everything. of his work. And who knows what happened to Tesla's work? We don't even know. Yeah, I 100% I mean, agree with that. Like most of these ideas can be traced back to him. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. Totally, because I mean, he was working on like a time travel machine. Mm -hmm. He was already, he already discovered anti-gravity and discovering that you can pull electricity from the very space around you mm -hmm. and utilize it for all of the things that we need electricity for. And yet here yeah. we are hundred years later, still on fossil fuels. You they don't know? want people to know that. Can you imagine if the public found out that there's an alternative? We could be saving our planet right now. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, it's a damn shame. Yeah, it's a shame. A lot of shit is held from us for those reasons, though, you know. And if you don't understand that you are in some way controlled, I hate to break it to you, but we're all kind of controlled, you know, in a way that yeah, we're extent. limited to what we can do and mm -hmm. have limited access to these technologies that mm -hmm. could be out there. Mm -hmm. Dr. Newman also claimed that they had the technology to allow people to materialize objects with their minds. If you think about that for a second, that's a really crazy concept. Like anything? Materialize like any I could materialize an iced coffee right in front of me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Iced coffee, a million dollars. How about a refill on this? <laughs> I mean, maybe it's not as crazy as that. It could be maybe you could only materialize things that you can see or things yeah, I'm that I'm sure it's more complicated than that. Yeah, it's probably not just like, hmm, let me think of something and pop, there it is. That'd be cool though. That would be cool. Mm. So that was the first experimentation really involved with the Montauk project and the actual project itself began under the name Phoenix project. But when they were in Brookhaven at those laboratories, they realized that they would need a very large like radar dish in order to, you know, be able to do all the work that they wanted to do. So they moved the actual project to Montauk, New York to Camp Hero, which is where they have this giant Sage radar installation. And basically the Sage radar system is like a uh, semi-automatic ground environment it's a antenna for a computer network system that they had and they wanted to put it out somewhere where you know it wouldn't be around where everybody was at so they wouldn't be able to see it obviously you can see it now but back in the time when this project started they wanted to kind of create get to an area where mm -hmm. they could really do all these experiments and in private and mm -hmm. keep it all secure so that's when they actually moved to camp hero now camp hero has been around for a long time actually it goes even as far back as to the Revolutionary War. And before it was called Camp Hero, it was actually Fort Hero. And it was a great military installation because it's kind of on the edge of Long Island. And it's kind of, you know, if you had enemies coming via sea, then you would, that would be a great spot to see them come into uh, the New York area. So Camp Hero was actually built in 1942 in the Montauk, New York area, like we said, and it was designed as a covert naval base built completely underground and it supposedly goes down as far as 12 levels but we can't confirm that for sure right right we can't confirm that it goes down 12 levels we do know that That's there really is interesting. a lot of tunnels though it is underground most of the base is underground maybe it's not 12 levels but it must go down some levels right it does go down and we know that there's enough bedrock uh, under on that actual island that you could go down hmm. pretty far and people have actually snuck into the tunnels there because 
yeah, they're all covered up now and concreted in and stuff, but people have found a way into them sometimes. And there is in fact a huge underground system down there and it's never been fully explored as far as I know, because they tell you not to go in there at all. There's warning signs everywhere. But this area near Montauk is a perfect place to, to put an underground base in a, in a secret place. There's a lot of like bluffs uh, on this hill. So it's a great place to put. They built in all of these different uh, bunkers and things like that for mm -hmm. weaponry to kind of be hidden in this uh, base that they have there for when they actually did use it as a military installation uh, mm -hmm. for a long time. We didn't know about mm -hmm. all these projects until later on when the base was supposedly not being used. Right. But for a long time, it served as this really great base for the military to use. And especially going back, like I said, the Revolutionary War, it had a great view of the ocean. So you could always see if enemies were, we're approaching. Coming. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's interesting that it's been and used for you. so long. There's just so much history. Absolutely. It's mm -hmm. been around for a very long time. And Montauk, the city itself, is a very small town. It's only got a few thousand people. And it's currently a resort town where all the wealthy go on vacation. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. It really Ooh. is. That, that I wonder of course, if there's any correlation between that, you know, yeah. elitists yeah. going. Oh, I know. I always that wonder area. that too. Hmm. But Camp Hero itself is actually 278 acres. And what's interesting is that when they, uh, the military sort of handed over the, uh, it's a state park now, handed over to the state. They said that the state only owns the surface of Camp Hero, but we still own all the underground areas. The military still does to this day own the area that's underground the base. Well, aren't they basically admitting that it exists if they're, you know, saying we own all underneath it? Yeah, they're saying that the Camp Hero is real and the base is real, but they're not admitting anything that happened in the actual base, okay. the underground base. Okay. Yeah. The projects itself are all completely unconfirmed by the military. Mm -hmm. to, as far as we know, according to the official story, Camp Hero was just a military installation. But they admit that it goes down 12 levels? I thought they no. didn't admit that. No, the 12 levels thing comes from a whistleblower who we'll talk about, Preston Nichols, okay. who actually w says he worked in the Camp Hero base and actually was the one that said that it right. went down that far, that okay. there was all of these different levels to it. But I think Camp Hero is most distinguishable because of its large radar tower that it has. It's one of the only buildings you can really see or is that is above ground there. And this radar tower is super, super large. It's 120 feet tall, it weighs 70 tons. And what's interesting is that this dish is rumored, of course, to transmit radio signals in the 425 to 450 megahertz range in order to penetrate human consciousness, making a person susceptible to mind control. So a lot of people that believe in the Montauk project think that the reason why they had this large radar tower was their plan was to use it in order to influence and penetrate people's consciousness and control oh, them i wonder how far they would you know potentially be able to reach people's minds with something like that yeah i know if it's actually real well and that's the thing about these radar towers it's, it's like this computer network so it connects to a bunch of other things and and so it has the ability to transmit and and do all sorts of crazy stuff but again it's just a radio tower as far as we know we don't know that it actually has this ability to mm -hmm penetrate someone's mind or anything like that certainly mm -hmm. not today because it's not active as far as we know this tower but the radio tower is one of the only things that you can actually go and see today you can't go into it or anything like that without you know hopping the fence but it is one of the only structures left of camp hero that you can actually see and there's actually people that fly drones over and stuff too you can go look at it and see you know a better view of the base from an aerial perspective which is pretty cool before we dive into the Montauk project in more detail and, and what actually went on there, it is important to note the Philadelphia experiment because it is, it's another government project that really kind of has led into the Montauk project. It's also one of those topics that could be an entire episode in itself. So I want to give a brief overview so you can actually just understand what the Philadelphia experiment actually was. So in October of 1943, the U.S. military allegedly conducted secret experiments in the naval shipyard in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and the goal was to try to block the Nazi radar so they could bring supplies to allies in Europe safely. And this plan was supposedly presented to Congress, but was quickly rejected for being too dangerous. And then the proposal was then presented to the Department of Defense with promises that the project would result in a new powerful weapon that would drive the enemy insane at the touch of a button. 
But because it wasn't approved by Congress, the funding would have to be top secret and supposedly come from a cache of Nazi gold recovered from a train found by the U.S. soldiers in France. So this was how they obtained their funding in order to develop the technology that they needed in order to make this giant battleship, the USS Eldridge, invisible because they were going to use it in order against the enemy and they thought they had these abilities to uh, make the ship completely disappear. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. I have a hard time believing that. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and it's even said that they recruited Nikola Tesla and Albert Einstein to help complete the project. And this is unconfirmed, but it would make sense if they hired the two smartest minds to be involved with this. I feel like they would have been like, that's really difficult, man. Yeah. I can't really see <laughs> either of them participating in this experiment. Yeah. I don't know. I definitely question this whole story. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people tell it though. That's the thing is there's a lot of people that claim to have been on it or claim to have known about mm. it, about this Philadelphia experiment where instead of actually make when they actually went and tried this allegedly it did not disappear but instead time traveled and it caused a lot of problem for the sailors on board including disorientation uh just being completely scared shitless and even uh having some bodies fused in with the actual metal walls of the ship oh so gosh, like instead of terrible. you know like an invisibility cloak being thrown over the ship mm -hmm. and it's just it's there but you just can't see it but then the by mistake it time travels it time travels but in a weird way and and it fucks up everything on the ship interesting idea theory but yeah i don't know if i fully believe that one yeah i mean and that's really thing. difficult but mm -hmm. i mean unless they're that advanced and we're at the time. I don't know. It just kind of seems hard to believe. Well, yeah. And this is a, again, a brief overview. There's, there's a lot more evidence to it and there's a mm -hmm. lot more, a lot of whistleblowers have come out and, right. and talked about this as well. Yeah. And I guess that's the hard thing with whistleblowers at the end of the day, you have to like believe what they're saying. And it's not always concrete evidence, right? But it's like, you do got to take their word into consideration because a lot of time, what do they have to lose? by telling their story, you know, like mm -hmm. there's no point. It's not like they're going to make money off of it or benefit from it. If anything, they could be putting themselves at risk for talking about these things. So, it, I mean, you have to take them seriously, but I struggle with things that don't have more concrete evidence for sure like this. Yeah. And I mean, it makes sense though. Like the, the military would never want this to, to come out publicly mm -hmm. that they tried to do something like this the same. Yeah. So obviously you can't confirm it. And what you, would you put it past them? I mean, the fact that they were doing MK ultra experiments on humans who it would make sense that they would want to experiment on, on trying to make a ship invisible in order to, you know, attack the enemy and, and things like that. Of course, I believe that they would want to do that, but I don't know if they actually were capable of doing that. Is what right, I'm saying. right. Well, let, let's talk about somebody named Al Bilek. And he's a very interesting individual because he claims to actually have worked on the Philadelphia experiment and then later on worked in the Montauk project. But before we get to him, we'd like to thank our last sponsors for today. One of my new year's resolutions this year was to cook more. And with my busy schedule and all the stuff I've got going on, it can be hard to find time to go to the grocery store, get all the ingredients I need for a meal and then come home and cook it. But when I discovered HelloFresh, that took all of that inconvenience away. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit for a number of different reasons. They have a large selection of different types of meals, literally something for everyone, including low calorie, vegetarian, and family friendly recipes every week on their website. HelloFresh makes it super simple to make a meal because they send all the ingredients pre-measured in a box right to your door. It's super simple and super easy to follow, which is probably the best thing about it. And best of all, you can get a delicious meal on the table in just about 30 minutes. HelloFresh makes it super convenient as well to change your delivery schedule as well as food preferences. In our last HelloFresh box, we got a veggie box and in that box we had French onion soup, which is absolutely delicious. And right now, if you go to hellofresh.com slash milehar10 and use code milehar10 for 10 free meals, including free shipping. Again, make sure you check out this offer. All you got to do is go to hellofresh.com slash milehar10 and use code milehar10 for 10 free meals, including free shipping. Did you know that many conventional deodorants contain aluminum? It can form a plug in your sweat glands and keep you from sweating. And that's how traditional deodorants work. But native deodorant is different. It's all natural and made without aluminum so you can feel better about what you're putting onto your body right onto your pores. 
It's formulated without aluminum, parabens, or talc. It's also vegan and never tested on animals. You will actually recognize the names of the ingredients that are in the deodorant, such as coconut oil and shea butter. And it really works. Making the switch to an aluminum-free deodorant does not mean you have to sacrifice the performance. It definitely takes a couple of weeks for your body to adjust to a more natural deodorant, but once it does, it works like a charm. There's also no risk to try Native. There's free shipping on every order, and Native offers 30 free days of returns and exchanges in the USA. Personally, I just love the texture of it. It's very soothing on your underarms. So go check it out today and get 20% off your first purchase at nativedeodorant.com and use promo code MILEHIGHER20 during checkout. That's nativedeodorant.com using promo code MILEHIGHER20 during checkout for 20% off today. Running a business is stressful in itself, but having to go to the post office to mail packages or letters is a huge inconvenience. That's why I love stamps.com because you can do literally anything that you could do at the post office, you could do it at stamps.com. Not only can you get all your postage from them, but you can also save money with discounts that you can't even get at the post office. So stamps.com brings all of the services of the US Postal Service right to your computer, whether you're a small office sending invoices or an online seller shipping out products, or even a warehouse sending thousands of packages a day, stamps.com can handle it all with ease, Simply use your computer to print out the postage that you need, and you can do it 24-7 for any letter, any package, and then have your mail carrier come and pick it up or drop it in a mailbox. It's literally that simple. And plus, time isn't the only thing you'll be saving if you use stamps.com. You also get five cents off every first-class stamp and up to 40% off shipping rates. Who doesn't want to save money? It's no wonder that over 700,000 small businesses already use stamps.com, including ours. Right now, our listeners are getting a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale without any long-term commitment. Just go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in Mile Higher. That's stamps.com and enter code Mile Higher. So like we talked about at the beginning, how Stranger Things is loosely based upon the Montauk Project, what's interesting is they actually made a movie about the Philadelphia Experiment. And this is where Al Bilot comes in because actually when he watched the Philadelphia experiment back in 1988, at the time he was 57 years old and he, after watching this movie, it sort of triggered some things for him mentally. Mm. And he started uh, remembering or recovering these repressed memories of having actually worked on the Philadelphia experiment and the Montauk project. Okay. I can see that both ways though. Cause I think you could easily watch something like that and then get inspired with some memories, sure. you know? Yeah. Uh, or I guess it could trigger memories if you really had been through the experience. But I mean, it's just kind of hard to yeah. to believe. Yeah, I was going to ask Janelle about repressed memories if you, uh, with your psych background, if you uh, have any insight on that. Because I think it's an interesting idea, but it's like hard to believe that that's a real thing. And I believe it is a real thing to have a repressed memory that is there, but then something triggers it or something brings it back into focus for you. Yeah, it is hard to believe in this situation. Yeah, that's totally possible. Um, Especially if you have like, you know, if you go through a traumatic experience or something, you can totally block it out. Right. And there will be triggers that will all of a sudden bring you right back into that state. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, yeah, I guess it's totally possible. And I think also if you... You're you can convince your brain of like pretty much anything really. So mm-hmm. if you convince yourself that you were a part of this, or maybe if you ha- you know how sometimes if you have a dream, and then you're like thinking about at least this happens to me sometimes I'll be like did this really happen or, or was, was this a dream? dream? Yes, and and then I'll be like no that I've you know this has definitely happened to me. I'm like but I'll talk to other people about it and they're like what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. And so I think your brain can really you know tr- trick you into anything, especially if it's something if this really happened, I suppose that, yeah, you could have maybe erased it from your memory. Maybe it was traumatic. And then all of a sudden it's uh, back in and, Mm -hmm. and, you know, you're kind of like re-triggered. Yeah. I mean, totally. You can, I can really see it both ways. Like I said, he could have been triggered or it's kind of convenient timing. This is getting some attention. Maybe he wants to ramp up the story a little bit. Right. Well, Um, and it got for him, it was like really severe that he, started remembering that he wasn't who he thought he was like he was actually named something else he wow. stated that his real name was edward cameron but that his mind was actually erased and he was brainwashed into believing that he was al Bilek. Oh, i mean it would be so nice to have some 
but it's like how do you verify any of that how do you verify can you verify any of that well you can't if this really happened then there's no way to verify it because they brainwashed you and made you think that you were somebody else because you were experimented on and they didn't Mm -hmm. want you remembering that this whole idea of being able to like wipe memories or if the government has technology that's capable Mm -hmm. of just making you completely forget about something erase it Yeah. yeah the whole erasing your mind concept is is wild i wouldn't be surprised if they have something like that though because that seems to be the trend among most whistleblowers especially ones that claim to have been involved in secret projects or with extraterrestrials or things like that they seem to always state that they were either involved in the project and then they were Mm. completely your mind was completely erased and and then years later years go by and they start they go through hypnotic therapy like Stan. I mean, we t- when we talked about Stan oh, yeah. Romanak, he claimed to, right. you know, remember all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but it's it's hard to know whether or not you can believe what they're saying is right. true or not. Because in Stan's case, he's full of shit. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, Anna, I think the other thing is, is a lot of uh, mental illnesses can trigger false memories and mm-hmm. people can take on That's multiple great personalities point. and... Uh, you know, a lot of people are convinced we were, I can't remember what it was. We were researching some topic and, uh, someone, I think it's for a future video and someone thought, you know, they were two different people and Mm -hmm. they were the Messiah and they were very convinced and it was because they were schizophrenic. So, I mean, it's possible. Did this guy have something like that? Um, especially when did, you know, this back then it wasn't as common. I don't think to really look into mental illness. I think Mm -hmm. you were just kind of a, Mm -hmm. A kook, maybe? Yeah. And so who knows? I mean, this guy could be having these false memories that he really believes is true. Right. Um, And if he was experimented on, who knows where his mental state is at. If he legitimately went through this. I'm just saying, I don't know if everything that he's saying can be, you know, taken seriously. Right. Right. But when you're in that much of a traumatic, if you go through such a traumatic experience, I think you could very easily. Yeah. Yeah. You could, you know, get confused on what you remember. Mm -hmm. And I think also people kind of picking your brain and being like, what if this is possible? Or I heard that this might be possible. Mm -hmm. And he could be like, oh, yeah, I think maybe I did see that actually now that you bring that up or maybe that did happen to me. Right. That's why it's so hard with these whistleblower stories. I just find it hard to really figure out what I should believe and what I shouldn't. Yeah. Or if it's just like a complete fantasy or something. Right. That people are because it's hard because even when i watch some movies i sometimes i like feel like oh maybe i I was somehow a part of that or you know (laughs) no i'm serious like in it but obviously i can discern like it's a fantasy but no yeah yeah Mm -hmm. i think some people have very wild imaginations and sometimes a movie that they might really enjoy or really feel like they connected with they might feel that oh i was somehow involved with that right and And if he did watch that movie and then I mean, who knows? Well, and he claims that this movie about the Philadelphia experiment was actually ended up, the government never wanted it to be released into theaters at all. And they actually went and banned the movie from being shown in theaters. Wow. And it was released later on as like just a, a videotape or whatever that you could get. But it was, as far as we know, it wasn't shown in, in theaters, uh, this Philadelphia experiment, because based on what Al says, the government was worried that it would trigger a bunch of people that were involved with the Philadelphia experiment to all of a sudden have these repressed memories surface and out out the project. That's an interesting theory though. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fact that they didn't let it play in movie theaters shows they were worried about something, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, and why isn't there more conspiracy movies out there? Right. We don't, like why isn't there more movies that play upon projects and conspiracies? Because they know anyone with a budget knows that they'd get shut down. Yeah. And you wonder too, I wonder even with Stranger Things, the fact that they changed yeah. the name. I wonder if there's even more. Yeah, there could be more to that story, not just detail marketing. to that as far as like, mm-hmm. what if they got a call from some unknown person in the military, the CIA that was like, uh, we're going to have to either shut your movie down completely or going to change the name to something other than Montauk because we don't want people to start looking up what Montauk is and start mm-hmm. digging into it and maybe finding some truth there. I don't know. It's really interesting, though. It is. What's also interesting is that after having these memories start to surface for Al, he would go on to talk about them at uh, conferences, specifically like the Mutual UFO Network conference in 1990. But he would also started looking into, you know, could this have been real? And maybe there's evidence of of this type of technology existing even far before around this time period when the 
a Philadelphia experiment was supposed to happen at all. And what he found was pretty interesting that going back to as far as like the 1930s, uh, even the early 20s, we're t having a lot of speculation in some of the more popular uh, media publications like Popular Mechanics, Science Illustrated, and they were actually talking about invisibility or trying to make objects disappear and teleportation even. And these were ideas that were getting kicked around in, in the early 1920s even. So it, to me, it kind of seems like, well, why were those ideas at that time period even being thrown around at all, especially in popular mm -hmm. uh, magazines and things like that, if there wasn't some validity to them or they were being researched and at that time period. Oh, they were definitely being researched, all those things. Mm -hmm. I mean, people were interested in that. And they, I don't think they've ever stopped. Why would they stop? Right. Why would you stop? Yeah. Like, I think they've just become better at hiding their research. Or they can it. do it right now. Or they can do it. They right can now. just straight up do it. Yeah. They figured it out and they know how to do it. Would not be shocked. But Al went on to claim that quickly after its inception, the entire project was moved to the Institute of Advanced Studies at Princeton. However, it is not actually a part of the university system or part of Princeton. He clarified that it exists on Princeton property, but is an independent entity. But what really connects Al to the Camp Hero and Project Montauk is his claim that he was on the USS Eldridge when it time traveled to Camp Hero on August 12th, 1983. So he actually believes and through his repressed memories remembers being on the ship when it actually time traveled to Camp Hero. So how did this idea of the Montauk project ever existing even come about? Because obviously there's no official release from the military or even the CIA or any declassified files that I could find that actually specifically reference a Montauk project. Because we know that Montauk, the place is real. It's a real mm -hmm. uh, town as well as Camp Hero. That's a real military installation that is no longer in use. But where did actually the Montauk project originate from? And it actually originates from a man named Preston Nichols, who mm -hmm. also believes he worked in the Montauk project. And he kind of put all of his experiences and uh, different things that he was involved with into a series of books, which he titled the Montauk project experiments in time. Oh, someone has sent me this book to my PO box actually. Really? Yeah. I recognize the cover. Yeah. That's cool. Isn't it interesting that the horse is literally the horse uh, out front of DIA? Yes. It's wow. the same stance. It's a statue of a horse standing uh -huh. on, on his hind legs. That yeah, it's like a Bronco. It does. Isn't that interesting that he put that on there? Oh yeah. We're talking about, um, what, what's it's called? Uh, blue. <laughs> what's his, what do they call him? Blucifer. Blucifer. Oh my gosh. Yeah. She's going to say the blue devil. Wow. <laughs> That's what I was about to say. Blue We're devil. from Denver and we don't even know what it's called. <laughs> Blucifer, the horse that killed the artist that made it. Mm -hmm. It's like a blue horse right outside of TAA, which is filled with conspiracies too. Oh, yeah. We need to do an episode on that. We have. <laughs> oh, we have? Yeah, we have. <laughs> oh, jeez. Sorry. Eventually just all blurs together. <laughs> it does. It does all blur like, together. Was that YouTube or podcast? But maybe there's a connection between Montauk and DIA. That's really interesting. So in these books that Preston writes, he doesn't actually specify whether or not the stories in them are real or fact, but he encourages the reader to make up their own minds about the validity of the stories for themselves. And he actually says, whether you read this as science fiction or nonfiction, you are in for an amazing story. And this is literally where the Montauk project originates. So that's why most people are like the Montauk projects just completely made up mm -hmm. because this guy authored these books and wrote about his time working in Montauk. But then more people started coming forward to sort of validate the what claims and stories he was talking about hmm. of what was happening there. Well, it's like the fact that MK Ultra is confirmed definitely makes you think, okay, they probably had similar projects. So it's not such a stretch that this guy actually went through these things. Right, right, exactly. I know I'm sounding skeptical in this episode, but I, I do believe that this probably did happen. The types of research and experiments mm -hmm. that they were doing. Do I believe everything word for word that the whistleblowers are saying? I don't know. That's where I struggle. Mm -hmm. Whether their personal testimony right. is actually true or not. Right. Do but, I want to believe every single thing yeah. that they say? I don't know. So to sum up the stories in the books, he talks about a lot of different things, uh, including all these different military and government experiments uh, pertaining to pertaining to mind control, even contact with alien life, time travel, teleportation, even the stage faked uh, Apollo moon landings he even talks about. So he believes those were staged as well. Um, and I then this, what he says about that specifically. Yeah. 
And his stories even contain information about a hole being ripped in space time. So like almost a portal being opened up uh, back when he wrote these back in the 80s. So maybe the Stranger Things uh, show is actually based upon these books that Preston wrote. Yeah, I'm sure that's where they got a lot of information and inspiration from. Inspiration from, right, right. So who is Preston Nichols? Preston Nichols was born on May 24th, 1946 in Long Island, New York. And he claims to have degrees in parapsychology, psychology, and electrical engineering. And parapsychology sounds interesting. It does. What does that mean exactly? I don't even know what that means. Apparently, it's the field of study concerned with the investigation of evidence for paranormal psychological phenomena. Oh, wow. So people that uh, study telepathy, clairvoyance, and psychokinesis. So psychic abilities pretty much is what it is. A specific focus on trying to figure out mm-hmm. how to how to do those things or explain them, I guess. Janelle, do you know anything about this? I was going to say... It- Honestly, I don't even know that much about it, but yeah, I'm pretty sure you have, have you seen the head. that in textbooks at all, though? Parapsychology, like, is that term? That's a real term. I think I've seen it here and there, yeah, but it's not like there's a class on it or like, anything, well, which would be accepted. really cool. That would, but be. yeah, I think it's more of that kind of gray area gray, that's like yeah. not fully accepted by all mm-hmm. academics, and it's oh no, I would say definitely yeah. not. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, I guess would. any sort of paranormal yeah. is not officially accepted mm, by no. academics. Exactly, yeah. So, like I said, essentially after Preston published these books that he wrote, people began to come forward saying that they could corroborate his stories, and they had their own stories that were very similar, as well as many of the claims that he made. And this is when Preston actually befriended Al Bilek. And he actually tells his story as well as his own in his book series. But a huge piece of the story is a project that Preston and Al supposedly worked on together called the Montauk Chair, which is a piece of furniture that used electromagnetics to amplify psychic powers. And apparently the first chair was built in 1974 and allowed for psychic transmissions to another base in Southampton, Long Island. But they began transmitting a false reality and creating time glitches. This concept of uh, the Montauk chair is really wild. To think that they would get individuals that claim to have psychic abilities, put them in this chair, hook them up to it, mm-hmm. and it would amplify their psychic powers and just push all this electromagnetic energy into them. I'm sure they were doing that. I mean, they were doing that for sure in MK Ultra, so it would make sense. Mm-hmm. It would make sense. So because the first chair that they made was having these time glitches, they decided to create a second chair in order to fix the glitches. And the second chair is the one that Al and Preston worked on together, along with another man believed to have extraordinary psychic abilities that also happens to be Al's brother, and his name is Duncan Cameron. And the majority of the Montauk chair experiments were conducted on Duncan due to his belief that he did have these extraordinary psychic abilities. And he was believed to have participated in his first psychokinesis experiment in 1963 at the age of 12 when he was supposedly kidnapped and taken to Camp Hero for the specific purpose. That's really scary. Mm -hmm. I'm sure shit like that was done, though. Yeah. That sounds like Stranger Things. Doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It Sounds exactly like Stranger Things. 11. Mm -hmm. Except for 11 was like a... Yeah. Never mind. I'm not going to go into all that. (laughs) So Duncan Cameron alleges that he could manifest objects with his mind by just thinking about them while in the chair. But according to the researchers involved with the project, he could only create items that he had seen or imagined in his head, Hmm. which kind of makes sense. Yeah. What is he supposed to create something that he that's never been seen before? Yeah. What? How would you do that? But apparently if the psychic signal was too weak, the item would quickly fade after he made it appear. However, with a strong signal, so being amplified through the chair, Duncan was able to manifest things that actually became permanent is how wow. it worked. That's crazy. I mean, if that's true, that's really that's fascinating. Wild. Yeah, the whole idea of psychokinesis, uh, yeah, psychokinesis is really wild in itself. Yeah. If, if the brain really has that ability and, and then what is it pulling from? Where yeah. are these objects actually coming from? I know that's what I was just about to say. Like, it's just materializes out of nothing. Is that how everything is then? Like if you're able to Whoa. materialize things with your mind, then that would just seem to me to prove that all of this is just a materialized ex- yeah. experience. That would definitely make me think maybe this is like even a really simulation. Brings you, yeah, it really, <laughs> it really brings you back to that or the holographic universe theory that this is just all holographic experience that our minds are, uh, 
you know, creating this movie for us to experience. Right. But it's like, how can we believe this though? You know, right. again, it's like you yeah. need extraordinary evidence for these extraordinary Where's the claims. evidence? Yeah. We're exactly. not seeing that. Yeah. Which I don't blame them because it's like, how are they supposed to get evidence if they did go through this? Well, and this next claim, as far as where they actually got the technology to make the chair from, definitely might make you think twice about whether or not they're telling the truth because they believe that the technology that they obtained could have come from extraterrestrial beings mm. and that they got this technology from beings that are far smarter than us that gave us this this technology to allow us to create things out of th thin air essentially hmm. which doesn't Maybe. seem it doesn't seem unplausible that an extraterrestrial being that's far more advanced than us might have this ability, ability to yeah. do that right if they are so much more advanced than we are mm -hmm. consciousness wise mm -hmm. So it is, I mean, it's interesting to consider. Mm -hmm. And to make things even weirder is that it's been alleged that Duncan's brother's father had a level seven clearance with the Pentagon in the 1980s. So according to Presson, there was a lot of different experiments and projects within the Montauk project itself. And another one that Duncan participated in was called the seeing eye experiment. And that was where with the right object, for example, a lot of sources mention a lock of hair Duncan could just think of a person and be able to see through their eyes, hear their hear through their ears, and feel what they were feeling in their body anywhere on the planet. Whoa, that's that's great. an interesting idea. Yeah, this well, a lot of psychics claim that if you can, you know, hold an object or hair that belonged to someone who has passed, then you can connect with their spirit. So maybe, in a sense, you can still connect with someone's spirit while the spirit's alive on the planet somewhere, just through their hair. Mm hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Isn't it? Because if that's even remotely real, that changes the whole game. Like if there's some people out there that have this ability, that's a little, little frightening. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, not that I think anybody's ever looked through my eyes because be like, what a waste <laughs> of time that is. But it is very interesting. It makes me think of Bran from Game of Thrones. He has this, the same type of ability where he can like look oh, through an animal's yes. eyes and stuff. It's yeah. pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That would be really cool. I wish that I had that be. ability. That would be, That'd be uh, to sweet. see through an animal's eyes would be really cool. Yeah. But then they pushed this experiment even farther in order to create an alternate reality for the actual person Duncan was seeing through and going as far as being able to control them as a form of psychological warfare. So invading wow. another human's consciousness and body, taking yeah. it over and essentially controlling what they do. So if you could that they get were testing this out, Kim John Un's hair. You could like control and see through his eyes and right. Oh, if you had this ability, imagine if that was actually the right a, object. a weapon. I mean, if this is real at all and they were studying this, then maybe they figured this out and they're using it today. <laughs> That's crazy. It's really crazy. According to Preston, he believes that these experiments were done on lots of different people. In fact, a large amount of homeless people and orphans were supposedly abducted to use for testing. And it's alleged that a few survived that actually were brought in for these experimental testing. Sounds like they were doing crazy shit on them. Yeah. Especially if they're dying from mm. these experiments. That's, that's wild. Uh, that's horrible. In addition to these test subjects, there was also eventually a large focus on a group of young men they would call the Montauk boys. And his claims around this group was the result of abducting and experimenting on young boys in the area specifically blonde hair, blue eyed orphan boys and boys who had run away from home from the surrounding areas. Does it sound like stranger things at all? Yeah, it or, does. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I would not be surprised if this is true though, because I know uh, I hate to admit it, but I think a lot of missing people have been abducted for yeah, that's researching what I was just say. And projects. If, if they were running these types of projects, which we know with MK mm -hmm. ultra, but projects like the Montauk project, mm -hmm. it would only make sense that, they would need testing subjects and how would they do that yeah and who would they pick from probably people that were homeless or orphaned would be the easiest uh type of person to select for this mm -hmm. and probably lots of them too because if you think about it how many do you have to go through to find an individual with some sort of psychic ability or a test subject that would be yeah worthwhile to run the experiments right. on right right well, I think that would be pretty hard because the amount of many. missing is staggering. Mm -hmm. The amount of missing people in the world and especially the U S is staggering. Mm -hmm. So, 
and especially in the national parks and that whole thing that makes you think too like Mm -hmm. if there are underground bases it's seemingly like they're in these beautiful places around the country yeah could there be the ground mm -hmm. and like people go missing in these parks and there's no evidence of it being something natural or an animal or you and they're look never more found. If you don't know about it, but it's really wild. It is. So it's very possible they could be brought into secret projects like Project Montauk. So when they kidnapped these boys, the scientists would allegedly want to break the boys psychologically so they could implant subconscious commands. And it's rumored that if the boys did not achieve their psychic ability goals, they were murdered and buried at Camp Hero. Oh my gosh, that's terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying. And again, there's never been any bodies that have been dug up in Camp Hero. Or, You'd think there would be. Mm-hmm. But then again, I mean, if it goes down 12 levels, then it, yeah, it could maybe. be somewhere way underground. Right. And we, obviously, they would do a good job of hiding yeah, them. Yeah. I mean, they would never want anybody I mean, I to find them. I hope it's that. not true. But right. I wouldn't be shocked if it is. Mm-hmm. And those that were believed to have been released were programmed with an alternate personalities in order to be sleeper cells who could be activated when needed to perform missions. That's crazy. That is crazy. If there's people out there like that, that are working for a project like this with these abilities. Al Bilek actually goes into further detail to say that these boys didn't just travel through time, but took numerous trips to a research station in the year 10,000 BC to collect canisters of light and dark energy. That's wild. I mean, it, it, that's the thing with some of these whistleblowers is it's almost like the claims just get too wild mm-hmm. where you kind of lose all trust in what they're saying. Cause you're like, really? They time traveled to 10, that hundred or hundred thousand BC. I'm sorry. hundred thousand BC to collect canisters of light and dark energy. It just sounds insane. I know it really does. Yeah. I don't know, man, but apparently people claiming to be a part of the Montauk boys would come forward to tell their accounts also and they reported a lot of crazy things, including being sent to the year 6037 to investigate a ruined city to examine a statue of a horse. And this horse is the horse that's on the cover of his book series is from 6037. Oh, that's why it's on there. Mm-hmm. Of this ruined city. It's very weird. And they also claim that they traveled back in time to see multiple wars. They saw alien life forms, little grays and normal grays giant lizard people and extra dimensional beings in humanoid shapes made of hollow glass. That's wild. That is. And eventually, and eventually after years of experimenting, Preston alleges that they could reliably travel through time and space, even going to Mars several times in his books. Preston also claims that Duncan was the one who was able to open a portal inside of one of the pyramids on Mars. That's crazy. We were just talking about pyramids on Mars at the beginning. And the CIA actually released that document. So fuck, maybe it's real. It's crazy. I know. But it's weird when things like come together like that. Isn't it? Yeah, the connections are there. It's it's wild. But the teams who traveled to Mars claimed to have seen a solar defense system that had been disabled before they could continue testing. And the film Total Recalls a uh, loosely based off of what was found by these teams who traveled to Mars. That's cool. So it's it's weird. It's like all these projects have some type of mm. movie that is somehow representing it it's really weird it's also worth noting that scientists would allegedly spend a week with a subject to prep them before having them travel through time and those that return were expected to make a full report however it is believed that most of the test subjects did not return so when they went time traveling there was no way back most of the time that's great i mean and i've heard that time is linear so if you go one way or the other you're not gonna you can't go back i've heard that before too from other conspiracy theories that if you time travel that maybe you can't get back to where you originally started from there's no maybe get close but you can't get exactly back to where you were yeah it's just not possible that's so weird to think about it is and through this time travel scientists involved with the project state that they tapped into a parallel universe known as the old universe so Preston is, explains that the old universe is basically that a long time ago, there was a parallel universe. Probably most of mankind was in that old universe and it evolved into a totally despotic form of government that took hold and held for millenniums, which is essentially what the one world government has here. And what has happened was a small rebel group that were fighting this and the fight continued and it went on and on just as in star Wars. That's great. And that's yeah. cra- as crazy as it all sounds when you when you stop and you think about it. It's like it's possible. And go piece by piece through how crazy this sounds. It kind of you can start making some connections there. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, we got the Space Force now. Like, yeah, we're I like, know. it's like we're That's heading weird. into Star Wars in our own life, you know, in our own reality right now. That we're going to be a dominant force in space. And what's that going to look like? Is there going to be warfare in space? Interplanetary travel, going to the moon. That just blows my mind. I'm like not ready for the future. It's going to be a trip, man. That's for sure. Well, if any of this is real, it's definitely yeah. going to be a trip. <laughs> yeah, it is. But at some point, Preston was instructed to turn on the Montauk chair and leave it running through August 12th, 1983. And due to there being another time travel machine on, they created a wormhole to 1943, which is supposedly how Al Bilek and his brother Duncan came through the portal to the USS Eldridge during the Philadelphia experiment. So the, he, the only reason he experienced the Philadelphia experiment was because he went through a wormhole, which time traveled him. A wormhole. Back to, a wormhole. <laughs> a wormhole. <laughs> back to 1943 when the Philadelphia experiment happened. So again, there's no way to verify this at all. But after this experience that Al went through, they decided that the wormhole was too dangerous to keep open and he and three of his colleagues made a plan to shut down Project Montauk altogether. So this kind of leads us to the end of the road as far as Project Montauk. And, and now we can really kind of discuss whether or not it's real or is it just science fiction? I mean, again, all of this information is coming from these books written by Preston Nichols. There's no military documents. There's no declassified CIA documents right. that details any of this. Mm -hmm. But I think if you do look at what's out there that the CIA has released and you read that, and if any of that is true, you can start to think, well, maybe, maybe some of these things that Preston is saying are, is true or you definitely can't completely, you can't completely it. rule it out. Right. That's for sure. And I think this whole thing about this creepy creature that washed up on the shore near the Montauk area yeah, this is kind of the, think twice. It does. So, thing. so yeah, that's a great point. So part of, part of this conspiracy too, is that aliens are using tunnels underneath it. And a lot of people that have come forward to talk about their times, there's, there's another guy named Stuart Swerdlow who claims to have worked in project Montauk and mm -hmm. he encountered aliens down there. Like Multiple the military species. was working with uh, not only reptilians, but also the gray aliens. All the and species that people talk about. All the, all the yeah, all the common yeah. alien species. And the experiences that they had with them are interesting because they line up with all of these other people who claim this too. Yeah. Which I mean, again, that could just be everybody kind of falling in line with each right. other. Or mm -hmm. there is some validity to it because multiple people have had the same experience with so these many aliens. people talk about the reptilians and the grays and these yeah. and the uh, totally there's one that's like going back mantis. years and years and years yeah it's pretty wild to think about if that's true mm -hmm. but these guys that wrote the books on project montauk and really provided all this information none of them are alive today mm -hmm. they've they've all passed on and sort of this legend of montauk continues but one of the most interesting things about this whole topic really uh, that i find fascinating and is 100 percent real is that in 2008 this unidentified animal carcass washed up on the Long Island beach right outside Nasty. Camp Hero. And we only got pictures of it mm -hmm. before it was washed back out to sea, never to be seen again. I don't even and it was never that. tested. Yeah, I know, right? It's I hard bet to someone believe went it. and got it. I feel like so somebody or the military or somebody picked that Recovered up. Recovered it. Or like was keeping an eye on it. And as soon as it went back out to sea, at that night they go out and pull it out of the water or something or, maybe or it's just seriously got pulled back out to sea and it's yeah. just floating around out there Ew, that's so disgusting okay so if you're listening this is the nastiest looking washed up i don't even know what to call it it's like not it's clearly not a normal animal or any recognizable species it almost looks like it has a turtle head like some type like of weird human ear or like elephant ear even yes um and then this creepy like its hands aren't a full it's got fingers yeah. it's got full-on fingers on it like it human looks fingers. like a turkey in the back it's like <laughs> a bald eagle mixed with a dead cat i don't even know how to explain this thing it's the grossest looking thing and this was reported by a ton of news outlets it's, it was on yes, all the mainstream it's a media real outlets thing it's a real picture too it's verified photo mm -hmm. uh so that's creepy as fuck so a lot of people think they were doing you know experiments in montauk right. on animals combining different species together right. testing out all these different things or you know giving them uh drugs or hormones right. or something to make beef them up or 
That's well, why I say this reminds yeah. me of Zootopia. Yeah, 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 totally. Well, I think a one common theory among uh, conspiracy theorists, especially in the, the UFO world, is that the government has the ability and technology to create these hybrid species of animals to uh, basically do a job for them. And the reason and the reason why they make them is because they take all the best characteristics. So take the best things about a wolf, take the, the mm-hmm. best things about a tiger, take the, the best things about elements. Yeah. yeah, the strongest elements from Try all these build animals, a super animal, build a super animal. Exactly. So a lot of people believe that this could be some type of hybrid mm-hmm. animal that came out of the tunnels. It looks like Montauk. something you wouldn't want to fuck with. It looks mm-hmm. scary. It, it looks, looks for, mean. It looks like it could tear you up for sure. Ugh. Yeah. So a lot of people believe that maybe this animal somehow originated in the Montauk project or camp oh, hero area so creepy and that there could be more out there. That's and that's weird. the reason why they, they, when they gave camp hero to the state, the military first or whoever did went in and cemented and manholed all the openings to the tunnels because that shit's all still there. Oh, and what's interesting God. is I read one account on Reddit. And again, I mean, there's no proof mm-hmm. of this, but one, somebody on Reddit said that they went and into one of the tunnels, they were able to get one of the manholes off and they went into one of the tunnels. And while they were in there, the tunnel was filled with water, like up to his, I think like his uh, chest or something. But he said while he was in there, he could hear just like this sound, this strange sound emanating down the the hallway of, or hallway, the, the tunnel itself. And it was just like, whoop, 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 whoop the whole time he was in there. Oh, that's so And creepy. it was like, sounds like he Jaws. knew he heard it for sure, but he, I mean, he never found, mm-hmm. he never went farther into it because it Figured freaked out him it out. That, yeah. That maybe deep below it that they closed it up or whatever, but there could be another entrance to it. We don't know. Oh, that's so freaky. That they could even be doing stuff down there and maybe he mm-hmm. heard like a, I don't know, either a creature or some type of generator or like activity a radar. Yeah, happening sound like something. below there. Oh, that's weird. It's creepy mm-hmm. maybe so it's it's really hard to say that whether or not this is real or not but i think that i believe there was probably some type of secret projects going on there because i mean why not it's like the perfect place to do it and something secretive was happening mm-hmm. around there the fact that they closed everything up and didn't want people going near it i mean there's some level of truth to this i'm just saying how much of it is true and how much right. is not but I mean, like I said, I know someone who's like been there and tried to sneak around and uh, I mean, they definitely don't want you to no, go they, in certain areas. And- the actual tower area, which is what's above ground, is all fenced off and there's signs like warning, trespassing, you'll be uh, right. prosecuted for that. And and obviously danger, like don't yeah. try to go in the tunnels. we we'll kill your ass. <laughs> right. Or this, or this creature, creature will, yeah. whatever's this lurking in the tunnels. turtle eagle. So we'll never really know what what happened with the Montauk project or whether it was real or not. Mm. What do you guys think? Let us know. But yeah, we'll go ahead and wrap up today's episode there. Again, yeah, let us know what you guys think about the Montauk project. Do you believe it's real? Do you believe the experiments that Preston was talking about were real? Let us know. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode of the Malahar podcast. Yes. If you have any other requests, we are taking requests for topics. We have a new system where you guys can put in your requests. If yeah, you want to hear a about form. a conspiracy or a crime or something, leave it below. Definitely leave us a suggestion. But until next time, stay safe and stay woke. <laughs>